Since we are unable to physically meet up and do church activities together because of the pandemic, QCEC prepared regular online activities via Zoom for our enrichment and fellowship. A prayer meeting every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Mixed group fellowship Sundays 8 p.m. Another prayer meeting on Tuesdays 7.30 p.m. Bible study in English Wednesdays 8 p.m. Bible study in Chinese Thursdays 8 p.m. And Youth Fellowship Fridays at 5.45 p.m. These activities are open to everyone. Non-QCEC members are also welcome to join any or all of the activities mentioned. Should you have any concern or prayer requests, please feel free to call up QCEC office. Thank you and have a blessed Sunday. Welcome to Quezon City Evangelical Church. Today is a great day to worship the Lord. Praise the Lord that we can come together and worship Him. In our own homes, let us come and listen to His Word. This is in Matthew chapter 6, verses 20, 25 to 34. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and a body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single R to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Praise be the reading of His Word, and it's a good encouragement to all of us not to be anxious, but to continue to trust in the Lord. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we praise Your name for giving us a beautiful morning, for giving us, O oh Lord, the opportunity to come together to worship, even though we're gathered in our own homes, yet in the Spirit, we are before you, before your heavenly court, and you have united us in the Holy Spirit, in the words of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ. So we thank you, O Lord. As we proceed, O Father, with our worship, may you find joy, and may you be pleased and be honored, O Lord, with the worship that we present to you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Lord, you are going through a hard time right now. Remember that God is there for you because He lives. God sent His Son. They called Jesus. He came to love. He lived for thee. He lived and died. Bye.
because Jesus lives. God bless you. love, how He loves you, how He cares for you. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was stained. Oh, I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown Oh, the old rugged cross so despised as a wondrous attraction for me. 
Oh, the dear Lamb of God Left His glory above To bear it to the Calvary So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at Last I lay down, I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross. I will lay. Shame and reproach gladly bear. Then you call me someday to my home far away, where His glory forever I share. So I cherish the old one. At last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown I will cling to the old rugged cross
Today, we are going to talk about anxiety and see Paul's role as a pastor, discipler, and mentor. We're also going to examine how Paul helped the Corinthian believers handle problems in the church, especially related to anxiety. Let's pray. Our passage for today is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 32 to 35. Itako, Wanu First Corinthians chapter 7, verses 32 to 35. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife. And his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. 
I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your, for your word. Let us discuss its background. The church in Corinth, in Corinth has a lot of problems. Um, among the problems, we have divisiveness, spiritual pride, spiritual immaturity, legal cases, and even sexual immorality. All these problems bond the church. So that coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, The Corinthian believers initially were suggesting to become celibate so as to avoid sexual immorality. Therefore, Paul counseled them that with so much sexual immorality going on, it is best for those who have already been married to stay married. For those who are still single, it's best that they consider their um, spousal prospects very carefully. And for those single parents, widows, widowers, Paul advised that it is better if they stay single just as Paul did. However, if they cannot control their own passions, it is best that they get married. Then Paul also counseled those who have unbelieving spouses to continue to stay faithful to the Lord in their marriages. To take to help to help their uh, unbelieving spouses come to get to know, to know the Lord in as many possible opportunities. Paul also reminded them to live according to the calling the Lord has given to each one. For the present world is passing away, and so we are to live for God. So Coming to verse 32, Paul said, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. First of all, Paul tells them, I want you to be free from anxieties. Who was Paul? What authority did he have in addressing the church in Corinth this way? Let us remember that Paul was the one who planted or um, established the Corinthian church. He was their pastor. He was their mentor. Regarding matters of Christ, uh, Paul was their mentor. While Paul has um, mentored and taught them, guided them well about uh, regarding how to live for Christ. He was their mentor. 
非常了解高丽多教会的下的每一位。We can safely say that Paul knew the Corinthian believers very, very well. 做伊的牧师、教师、甲文道训练师。He was their pastor, mentor, and discipler. 我多就按照伊看到伊。以上看到方式，在高林多信徒遮，就是为呃，因你带来忧虑哦，会就是会改变。因你带一家改变哦，会引起真侪忧虑啊。Paul foresaw that the Corinthian believers were setting themselves up for changes that would eventually give them more anxieties. 所以保罗来讲。Therefore, Paul told them, "I want you to be free from anxieties." Let's first understand what is anxiety. Now, let's first understand what is anxiety. Let us 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 first understand Let us understand this emotion and understand what God's word is telling us about it. 对医学边来讲哦 ，medically speaking， 忧虑是身体对压力的自然反应。Anxiety is our body's natural response to stress. 这是一种对啊，既然将发生的代志会恐惊，还是忧虑的感觉啊。It's a feeling of fear or apprehension about what's to happen or what's to come. 就像讲，要开学的头一日，要参加工作的面试，哦，演讲，要去签章，还是公司，咱有社会人的哦，去得到这个高分。For example, these are cases like the first day of school, or going to a job interview, giving a speech. Going for your vaccination or having a family member contract COVID. So I all long to have them to them. Can get your concern, concern, you know. All these um um situations would is ah would cause people to experience fear and anxiety. We don't get to a city, see what young. In our progressive urban life. Let me tell you. 拄啊好的忧虑是正常的。We can safely say that a、uh, good degree or normal degree of anxiety is、um, common. 但是医生有确定讲说，假如你的忧虑感觉非常强烈的时阵。However, doctors can tell us that if our feelings of anxiety are extreme. 然后这种忧虑哦，就是拄啊好六个月。Or that these anxieties last longer than. Six months. Then, if you go down, you will be a sewa. And that if this anxiety has interfered with your daily living, you could then have this anxiety disorder. Then it's very possible that we have anxiety disorder. Then, now, if you look at spiritual aspect, spiritually speaking, you know, is the anxiety disorder in the body. Is this disorder? We can acknowledge anxiety is also a God-given emotion to us humans. 但看就像担心咯，还是恐惊咯，相对就是负担这个忧虑的情绪感。Similarly, with worry or fear, all these are God-given emotions. 再就是为了要坚固咱，就冷静落来，就安静。God gave the God gave us these emotions in order to warn us to calm down. 然后去摄像方式去了解，真正在发生的这个大代志。God wants us to calm down and to understand what's going on. 忧虑就是身体的坚固协同。Anxiety is the body's warning system. 表明咱真正在经历心内情绪、社会问题、压力，还是担忧，跩就是需要好咱。Anxiety is the body's warning system that we're going through psychological, emotional, social concerns, pressures, or worries 
and that we need to draw near to God once more. Sometimes anxiety is also a way of telling us that we need to seek God in uh, to guide us in our plans and endeavors. Then, anxiety also warns us that, okay, we're, we're trusting on our own strength, we're not trusting on God. In the big picture of life, anxiety is given to us as a warning system. Just like road signs or traffic lights along the road that warns us of danger. So Anxiety that is guided by scripture can actually help us to navigate through life. However, anxiety that is not uh, guided by scripture can eventually kill us. There are many uh, byproducts of anxiety. Fear. Worry. Depression. Panic, sit in, insomnia, uh, binge eating, mm-hmm. anorexia, and many others. So All these have become sinful. Oh. When anxiety preoccupies and controls one's life and well-being, when we, when we have begun to experience all these other byproducts of anxiety, then sadly we have become slaves to our emotions. Prolonged anxiety may lead to serious mental disorders. So anxiety becomes a sin when we start to look for something to worry about, to be anxious about, or else our day wouldn't feel complete. So you know what to be so it's uh, in this way, anxiety has become a sin. Unfortunately, there are some people out there who have experienced this. They are anxious about everything. They have to worry about everything. When things are smooth sailing, everything is going great. They find it so uncomfortable, it's so abnormal for them. They feel that it's only right that they have something to worry about. Unfortunately, for some people, they see anxiety as a form. To, to boost their, their feelings of heroism or feeling the martyr complex that they have to worry about these things. So, Dear brothers and sisters, Why call him to sin to to see any young? The Corinthian believers were exactly like that. They were anxious even about the littlest details. Take note, instead of focusing on living for their Savior and Lord, 
And knowing his gracious word. In just say what God does, what just say, let's do it. See me, see me, can I do it? See me, boy, can I do it? They became more focused on the do's and the don'ts. In ko ba ko ay kau kong say, see me, so tell me, see me, I see me, kau ko eh, no, you do it. See me, I see me, kau ko eh, boy, can I do it? They have started formulating their own ideas of things that they ought to do, the things that they they didn't have to do. At that point, they have already lost sight of living and enjoying God's calling in their lives. Therefore, Paul reminded them once more about uh, about the calling of God. Oh, just in to show, hey, in source, show how they are a day we. Um, Paul reminded them to serve the Lord, for they have been called. In show how they are a source, I hope say to that they have to serve and worship the Lord wherever they were called. Bo pit ya we kai pe no tui di kap su tang ya bo pang zan. Unnecessary changes are not helpful. To once walk with the Lord. Si ni si bo pin yao e ko e e e pin kai pin ni. What are unnecessary changes? Bo pin yao e kai pin si bo ko lu kao tui kai pin. Asi tui palang o e yeng yong ju zui lo. Unnecessary changes are the are things that are done without consideration of its effects effects on oneself or on others. So ani bo shu kao i e ko. These are things done without consideration for uh, our, ourselves or for other people's anxiety. Unfortunately, some churches and even Christians are like that. Uh, they were more concerned about doing. Than being. They, are, they take part uh, in ministries, in serving, in doing various projects for the Lord, in joining fellowships. Unwittingly, in the process, they set themselves up. For the unnecessary stress and anxiety of these things. But then, God didn't even mention it. Ah, Bosu, ah, this is concept. You no, I don't know how to say it. Um, you might be wondering. Uh, wait a minute, Pastor. Are you saying you don't want us to serve in church? Just listen. Please listen carefully. What what we show you here? We are pastor is more than glad and honored for you to come and serve in QCEC. For 55 wonderful years, God has blessed our church. God has also granted us so many talents and ministries. So However, please listen carefully. If in your serving you have reached the point that your walk with God has been affected. Oh. Then it is not good for you. Neither is it good for the church. Therefore, I would strongly encourage each one of us to become a, a good disciple of Jesus Christ. That you you and I will grow in our walk with the Lord. And that we would enjoy God's word and God's grace in our lives. So I want 
it will quad you. Therefore, I want you to be free from anxiety. Scripture is replete with instructions as to how to handle life's anxieties. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25, Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. So Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. Yang dan it bo kwa lu, tibe kwan su, tia yo kito, yi kyu, kam sia, chong din so be, ka shong te kong. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When we review the passage for this, for this morning, the anxiety of the Corinthian believers then may seem trivial to us compared to now. They were concerned about preventing sexual immorality. They were concerned about relationships. They were concerned about how to live right with God. On our side, what we're mo uh, what's our top most concern now is the COVID situation. It's a life and death concern. Whether physically or financially. So they play Toledo Kawedi. For the Corinthian believers, Nandu Kamsha Shongte, in the Shongte Su in the Su to Polo, so in the Boksu, Tosu, Kapun, Tokun, and Su. For the Corinthian believers, let us thank God that He has given them the Apostle Paul to be their pastor, mentor, and disciple. Polo pangsan in kaikwat ini yulu kap kokciong kauhoy ebuntuin. He helped them through their anxiety and various church issues. Tui di kesan si kito kauhoy, tu ikin sulan umoksu tuanto na ikwato di kapwa e shopping kien kong. For believers in QCEC, the Lord has given us, each one of us, pastors to watch over your spiritual welfare. Our desire and intent is to disciple each member of the church. And not only that, our pastors hope to mentor the, the, the believers and to help them not only to go through the, this pandemic but also through life. Our role as disciples start when hunger and thirst for God's word motivates believers to seek a godly disciple with whom he or she can grow deeper 
in understanding God's word. These godly disciples can help us to grow in deeper understanding of God's word. However, remember this, a discipler is not a shield against anxiety. And neither is a discipler um, uh, a shield against other problems in life. However, our disciples are actually called burden bearers. When life gives us problems, a disciple can faithfully pray for and support us through the scriptures. In, ta, in confusion, in times of confusion, we need to seek guidance and wisdom from the God who created the world. Pastors and disciples are here very willing to help. Pastor knows that a number of our families have loved ones who, who, are, who are COVID survivors or COVID victims. Maybe you have gone through this COVID virus yourself. I understand what you have what you're going through. Um, we ourselves are also COVID survivors. Thank you, Lord. By God's grace, God has preserved us. We also have family members who have been struck with COVID. Uh, some have some survived. And some have passed away. Some are believers and some unfortunately have not come to know God. So In spite of this pandemic and the social distancing. Yes, we have to maintain social distancing. However, Pastor wants to tell you, please do not be afraid. Do not feel alone. We can still keep in touch. The church stewards and the pastors are just here. Please reach out to us. We can pray for you. And to the best of our abilities, we are willing to assist and help you. We are also here waiting to help you in your walk with the Lord. Um, in going through grief, definitely there is some sorrow. Elizabeth Kugler-Ross Elizabeth Kugler-Ross has studied about people who face death who goes through five stages of grief. How to get to see your name. The first one would be denial. Maybe she would know. The second is anger. Maybe to see how one one The third is bargaining. 
，诶，四个就是啊、呃、，depression 咯、哦嗯，就是 in 啊、呃，要路，我讲清楚过，我讲清楚过，要路就是 depression 咯、哦。The fourth is depression. You know, being sure, acceptance. Acceptance. Oh, so you know, my God, oh, then we just get, we do the just get single people, you know, we can get to go go in my God. Ah, for most of us, um, we have known people who has faced grief, and um, they have gone through these five stages. So, 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 For most of us, we're not ready to face that. But when it comes to facing the things, the whole world is facing the things. No matter how hard we try, we're not ready to face them. However, in the reality of things happening around us today, we have to face it one way or another. For us, believers, we have to face it one way or another. For us, believers, we have to face it one way or another. For us, believers, we have to face it one way or another. For us, believers, we have to face it one way or another. If we're able to see God's grace in the midst of death, this can help us in the midst of death. In the midst of death, or in the midst of death, it can help us in the midst of death. If we're able to see God's grace in spite or in the midst of this death and pandemic, it will help us to minister to those who are suffering or those who are anxious. We go get them all. Few months ago. We will go to a new place. You may think that it's really far away from where you are living. Would you believe it? Moving to a new place comes with a package of anxiety. Would you believe it? Moving to a new place comes with a package of anxiety. Would you believe it? Moving to a new place comes with a package of anxiety. Would you believe it? However, the Lord kept assuring us, our, our whole family. He would be our good friend. He kept assuring us that. His grace is sufficient for us. He is good and whole book. He is our good shepherd. So the we ah the day go to unjun good and good lang ko uhan ang kito ay sikat. Each week the Lord allows our family to have prayer time. Ito ay kito ay sikat ng kung uhan ang we ah good and kung zong good and takce good and kating good and kawe o dan ay kawe. 就是为所听的人，甚至为怀唔好的人而祈祷。This is a time where we can gather together and pray for each other, for work, for studies, family, for the church family, for loved ones, even for those who are affected or afflicted. So we can have such a time to pray for each other. And that way, we are able to get closer, get more intimate with God. So yeah, we can so we can take care of each other. Oh, we pray for each other. The Lord has also granted our family that every Saturday night we have our preaching night. Oh, good! That is a thing. How? We we always look forward to it. This is good. A a chance to hear a good preaching and a good message. This is when we we as a family get to hear messages of other good pastors. See, that is so well. Oh, long time we have not had the chance to hear a good. Yes, all of us go through hard thing, ah, difficulties in life, and they cause that. So what? No, in Korean, oh, it's all sin. They are in joy, up, not as if all. All these things, um, cause so much stress and anxiety. So in the end, that we give it, but in that you want, it can hold strong in love. Even though we may be physically apart. We are still able to reach out and communicate. So then, see now, here the Zimbe. So remember, brethren. So give it that you do a way. The words of our Lord. What the Yoh Han Hok in chapter two, verse thirty three, he said, "What we did go to our own country, is to help you in the way of peace. He said, 'You are in trouble, but you have a great courage. I am the way of the world.'" In John. Chapter sixteen, verse thirty-three. It said, "I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world." Now, then, this is a recap. In conclusion, our lives change, 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 change. In summary, 
Anxiety happens because of the changes in our lives. Some changes are good. Some changes are not so good. Some changes are within our control. And some changes are uncontrollable. So, through each new changes in our lives, please remember, Please remember that through every changes that you're going through, you have pastors, mentors, counselors, disciples, and even our church's stewards to look up to as your burden bearer. We can also be your prayer warriors. We are here to support you. Let us learn to face or deal with stress and anxieties together. Let us together learn to trust in God and to grow in His gracious word. May God continue to be your strength and your comfort. He is our help to persevere to the end. May God preserve each one of us. Amen. Amen. sins and griefs to bear and what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer oh what peace we often forfeit oh what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share Jesus knows our every
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy benediction. May our Heavenly Father who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of His glory with great joy. May the only God our Savior Jesus Christ grant us His grace and perseverance and hope as we await His second coming. And may the Holy Spirit continue to intercede for us and mediate for us and grant us the fellowship of God until the coming of our dear Savior Jesus Christ. In His name we pray. Amen.